Hey folks, Randy Gold here, Trout Magnet Man. Uh, gonna do a little information video on JDM Ultralight Fishing Rod. Been getting a lot of questions about them. Uh, people are starting to buy some because they see me using them, uh, which I don't know why that would make someone buy a rod, but uh, I'm gonna try to put out some info there that will help you navigate these waters uh, if you're interested in one of these rods, uh, customs fees, no custom fees, uh, uh, ordering process, uh, shipping, uh, time, uh, just general information about them. Uh, as I always like to preface when I'm talking about JDM equipment, I like to put out the word there. I don't suggest anybody do this. Uh, I don't try to push it on anybody. Uh, it's expensive. It's an expensive hobby to get into. Uh, the equipment is top, top of the line. Uh, you can't buy anything like these ultralight rods here in the States, but that don't mean everybody has to run out and buy one to catch a bunch of fish. You can catch a bunch of fish, as I've said many times, with a cane bowl and some line and some crickets. You can catch a whole bunch of fish. But these rods are, are take sensitivity off the charts, uh, aesthetics, uh, quality the craftsmanship they're just they're just quality quality instruments to fish with uh, they're extremely sensitive most of them depending on which which rod you get uh, they're more sensitive than any ultralight rod you can buy here in the states by far by far uh, but as I said I don't I don't want to push this on anybody I'm just giving the information uh, as to what I think might help someone who decides they want to buy this I buy one of these rods. When I started in this, uh, I had to do a lot of research, a lot of research online. Wind up at tackletour.net. Uh, there was a guy on there, a gentleman from South Africa, I believe he is, who helped me out a lot. I have not bought a single rod that I have been disappointed in. I've been blown away uh, every time I get a rod. Uh, the first time I got my first rod, uh, it was an aging rod. And it was very stiff. Uh, I was expecting uh, a typical ultralight type rod off the shelf here in the U.S., kind of noodly like. Well, these rods are not noodles, uh, at least not the aging and uh, uh, rods. They're, they're very stiff, very steely, uh, but that's where they get their sensitivity. But anyway, I, I've, I've done tons and tons of research, uh, translating uh, Russian pages uh, into English with Google Chrome to find out weights of rods where I couldn't find them from the manufacturer's website, translating Japanese pages. Uh, and, you know, I'm gonna pass some of this information on, hoping it helps somebody, uh, because it, 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 it takes a lot of time to do this research. Um, and I'm on just fixing to buy uh, uh, a super ultralight. I don't have one. I want one. I want to see what it's like. And that's the only way I'm going to know. I've read all I can find about them. Read everything I can find about them, which is not much. But I'm going to find out because I'm ordering one. It should be here in about a week. Uh, I'm going to get this video started. I'm going to show you some bending curves using a 70 gram weight, which I think translates out to about four and five eighths ounces on an area trout rod. Uh, an aging rod, a Mibayru rod, and of course another area trout rod, which is it's not an ultralight, it's an extra ultralight. So I want you to see what the bending curve is on these rods so you can try to determine, okay, what are you going to use your rod for? Uh, how flexible do you want it? For instance, a Mibayru rod is a perfect crappie rod. An aging rod is not a perfect crappie rod. It's very stiff. You can catch crappie with it. You can catch crappie with it all day long but uh, it's it's a very very fast rod um, i don't like fishing one uh, for crappie it's just not this is not what i do um, but anyway we'll uh we'll get started on the bending curve and show you the bending curves of these rods this is a six foot five inch major craft aging rod hard model it is an ultralight rod but you can see with this weight on here you've just got the bend up there at the tip. Uh, this rod has some serious butt on it. This rod uh, uh, is great for white bass, 
smallmouth fishing, uh, throwing small cranks for trout. Uh, it's just fantastic for that. You can even have fun with a bluegill on this rod, but I don't, I don't go out chasing bluegill on this rod, except as a drop shot rod. But we'll talk about that more later. Let's check the bending curve on another one. Okay, folks, here's the bending curve on a ticked six foot nine inch ice cube my Beirut rod. As you can see, we get the curve comes on down to the stripper guy. Excellent crappie rod, excellent bluegill rod. Uh, I'll talk about this rod a little bit more later, but this is my Beirut rod and you can see the bending curve on it. Okay, folks, here's the bending curve on a major craft, fine tail banshee, light action, area trap rod. You can see that this thing is folding up into a U. It gets way down in here, way down in here. This rod uh, is more, even though it's a light action, this wouldn't be the same as a light action bass rod, as you can see from the bending curve. Uh, it really puts a bend in this rod. Um, that is area trout rods. They have a much softer action than an aging rod. They're similar in action to a Mabayru rod, but a Mabayru rod is, is, is quite a bit, uh, well, it's, it's somewhat faster than this. Once again, this is a major craft, fine tail banshee, area trout rod, light action. Okay, folks, here's the bending curve on an extra ultralight area trout rod by Angers Republic of Palms. Uh, you can see the bending curve in it. Uh, it's a pretty stout rod. This rod is made for casting spoons to trout. It makes an excellent crappie rod. It makes an excellent bluegill rod. And it makes an excellent trout rod, which is what it was designed for. Bending curve on the extra ultralight. Okay, folks. I uh, had a lot of people wanting to know about my collection of rods. Um, and that's what I call it. I call it a collection because I have become a rod collector. Uh, but I fish with all the rods except this one laying right here in front of me. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about each rod as we go through here and what, what I would use them for, what I have used them for. This is a Mega Bass Shore Luck Limited. Six foot eight. It's an aging rod. It's all uh, Fuji components, uh, Fuji titanium frames, Fuji Torzite inserts. It's rated uh, to uh, 170th up to oh, maybe maybe 18th, maybe. It goes from uh, it's 0.3 grams to 5 grams. Uh, I'm usually pretty good for that. The line rating is 1 pound to 3 pound max. I never exceed line rating on these rods. This rod I've only used one time, and it's been in the case except when I take it out to look at it. It is uh, a thing of beauty. Uh, it was designed by uh, Mega Bass founder and owner, uh, Yuki Ito. Uh, he is considered a master at his craft. Uh, this rod is just aesthetically is is it's it's mind blowing. Uh, and this is not the most expensive rod I have in the bunch. This rod was on sale, I think, for 240 bucks. Uh, I don't know, three years ago, some four years. I don't remember when. I found out early on when the Japanese have a sale, it's a real sale. It's not like a sale here in the U.S. They put it on. It's a real sale. These rods, after that sale was over, it was a Christmas sale. Uh, these rods went back up to almost $500. Uh, the rods are now discontinued. When I say discontinued, they could be continued at any time. That's the way uh, Japanese rod companies work. They could bring this rod back into production. Whether they will or not, I don't know. But if you were to find one on eBay or somewhere else, if you could find one, uh, it'd probably run you about 500 bucks. Uh, if you can see the marbling on the bottom portion of the butt here uh, and the wrap here uh, above the winding check, the first winding check, it's absolutely gorgeous. 
And the butt on the end of the split grip here, that's all winding thread. Uh, it's, it's just a work of art and I fished with it one time, uh, caught, I don't know, maybe 100, 150 shell cracker. Uh, some of you may have seen my post uh, when I was doing fishing reports then. A lot of those shell crackers are 12 inches. This rod is extremely sensitive, uh, but I've never taken it out again to fish with it. Uh, maybe I will someday. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic rod all the way around. The next rod I've got to show you here is a Yamaga Blanks Blue Current TZ 8 foot 3 inches long cast. This is probably the only rod I've bought that I, I wish I might not have bought it because I don't use it that much. I bought it for a float rod for fishing the trout magnet, fishing for fishing trout, um, and it's 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 an aging rod. It's it's pretty stiff, uh, but boy, it's sensitive. And this rod is eight foot three inches and weighs two point four ounces. To me, that's remarkable. The graphite content on this rod is ninety nine point six tenths percent pure graphite. The rest of it's resin, and how they make their blanks, they keep that very secretive. It's a very sensitive rod. Uh, I have fished with it and I'll probably fish with it again. What it would be ideal for uh, is for a vertical jigging crappie fisherman who's jigging in 35, 40. I've even got a friend that's jigged in the wintertime in 50 feet of water in treetops to catch crappie. Uh, I've heard him talk about how it's hard to feel the bite. Well, I can tell you with this, this is gonna give you every advantage you could possibly want at feeling the bite because you're not you're not going to miss miss any bites with this. You're just this this rod is just super super sensitive. This rod is a major craft X ride aging rod. Seven foot five is rated from one thirty second ounce up to ten grams, which would be uh, pretty close. It probably be three eighths of an ounce. Line rating is two to six pounds. Uh, I have fished with this rod some. It's extremely sensitive. It's extremely uh, rigid. Uh, it's not a rod I'd fish for bluegill with. Uh, what I have used this for is to catch white bass with. Uh, I intend to use this rod to throw cranks on the Caney Fork River, small trout cranks. Uh, it'd be fantastic for that. Uh, it's not, you can catch bluegill with it. I'm sure you have some fun, but it's, it's not a bluegill rod. Uh, and it's really, uh, you could use it for trolling for cropping, holding in your hand, you'd feel the bite, but it's not really uh, uh, limber enough, in my opinion, for cropping, even though I've caught some crappie on it, uh, but it, it, it sure is a sensitive rod. Major craft, uh, this all has the Fuji components, uh, titanium frame guides, Fuji sick inserts, Major Craft gives you a lot of rod for the money, a whole lot of rod for the money. Now we're getting into some rods that I, I use quite a bit. This is a, a Yamaga Blanks Blue Current Jig Head Special 610TZ. Kevin from uh, crappie.com ordered one of these rods, and as far as I know, he really, really, really likes it. Uh, I use this rod uh, to chase smallmouth with two pound test line. Uh, I use it for trout fishing, the trout magnet when I'm twitching because it, it's, it's an aging rod, it's fast. Once again, all Fuji components, uh, Fuji titanium frames, Fuji Torzite inserts. This rod weighs just slightly over two ounces. It's six foot 10 inches, that's, to me, that's remarkable. It also has a 99.6, I think it is, uh, graphite content. Uh, they just do, amazing things when they when they make a blank. Uh, this rod is, uh, if there's any more sensitive, I I don't know about it. Uh, I'm sure maybe there are, but this this thing is, is, is extremely sensitive. I've caught bluegill on it. Uh, it, it gives you some fun with bluegill, uh, but uh, this, this rod allows you to fish two pound test, smallmouth waters. I've caught, I don't know, over four or 500 smallmouth on this rod. I've caught probably 50, 60 smallmouth on this rod that are 20, 21 inches. 
Uh, you're able to steer them. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just a pleasure to fish with. You, you, you it's, it's just great. You can feel everything with these rods. This rod is a ticked ice cube rock and drift six foot nine inch model. Uh, it's a very special rod in the fact that this whole upper section, solid carbon, SP carbon. Uh, that's what makes this rod very special. This is probably the best cast and retrieve crappie rod money can buy. It, it's just, it's, I don't want to seem like a, a Zen master here, but when you get this rod in your hand, you're crappie fishing and you're, you're catching crappie, it's just like you're one with the lure. It's just, you can feel everything. Everybody talks about when you watch your line, you'll see your line move before you feel it. Well, I can't see my line anyway. Uh, but I guarantee you, if the line moves, this rod will pick it up and you'll feel it. You'll feel it in your hand. You'll feel something different. Uh, and of course, when you get that crappie thump, I mean, it's bam, it resonates. It's, it's there. Uh, the action on this rod is perfect for crappie. Uh, it also has all Fuji components, uh, titanium uh, frames, torsite inserts. Uh, it's a great bluegill rod. I've caught it. A ton of bluegill on this. Uh, my last video I just put up, I was catching some crappie on it with the fin spin. Uh, this fish is the trout magnet. Great. I have used this rod for trout, uh, and it, it's a lot of fun catching trout on this rod. It's not my preferred rod for trout. It's uh, for fishing a trout magnet for trout. Let me say that. Um, it, it does okay, but I have a couple other rods. My aging rods, the Yamaka blanks that I just showed you is, is, is better for twitching the trout magnet for trout than this rod, although you can catch plenty of fish on this rod. This rod uh, is the most expensive rod I got. Cost a lot of money. Uh, one of my nephews just got one of these uh, three months back. Uh, he'd been seeing me fish with it for a couple of years now. He wanted one. He finally got one. Uh, he's glad he got it because these rods are no longer in production. And once again, whether Ticked will come out with this rod again, who knows? You may be able to find some in the marketplace. I don't know. Uh, there may be some on eBay. Uh, I don't. I don't really know. Uh, I know that I hope I never break it. Uh, it's it's a fantastic rod. Uh, it's probably one of the rods I use the most. Uh, it's just, it's just a great rod. The next rod in the lineup is a Major Craft Truser, six foot five, hard model. It's an aging rod. Now, some of you are going to ask me what does hard designation mean? I have no clue. I have uh, sent several emails to uh, the uh, online shop I bought this from. They tell me the H stands for hard. Well, I say, what is hard? Well, they, they can't really translate, I guess. that. But what I figured out is this rod is used to catch horse mackerel, which is a tiny fish. Uh, this rod has an extremely high graphite content. I don't know what major craft don't publish their, their graphite contents, but it's, it's, it's high. Uh, so these rods have to be super sensitive. That's why this rod is so rigid and stiff. Once again, uh, Fuji titanium frame, Fuji Torzite inserts. Uh, when I got this rod, I was kind of in shock. I'm like, what am, what am I going to do with this? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, you can see it's not, not much wobble to it, but the tip on this rod is seven tenths of a millimeter in diameter, solid. From here up to the tip is solid. Uh, this rod uh, I fish a lot. It's a great drop shot rod for a bluegill because it can handle the weight. This, this, this rod, by the way, is rated from two to six pound. The lure rating goes from uh, one thirty second up to three eighths. Uh, this allows me to uh, slowly drift this along on the bottom, a drop shot trip rig, trap magnet, uh, and boy, when a, when a bluegill, you can feel it. Now, I'm, I'm talking, I'm fishing 20, 30 feet deep. You feel it, you set the hook, you got it. This rod is also my go-to white bass rod. Uh, I love spooling this thing up, uh, putting a reel on here with two pound test line, throwing a uh, one eighth. I can throw as much as a quarter with this thing, really. 
uh, to catch white bass. There's a video on my channel of me doing that just for this rod. I mean, this this rod, uh, and of course, it's a great smallmouth rod. Uh, this is an ultralight rod, and I've caught bluegill with this rod, uh, and they'll give you a little bit of fight. That tip will, just the first quarter of it will fold up there. Uh, but it's, it's not, I don't take this rod out to catch bluegill, except if I'm drop shotting. Uh, and the reason I use it for drop shotting, as I said, is because it's extremely sensitive. Uh, this rod uh, I use a lot, especially in the early spring for white bass. Uh, it's just fantastic for that. You, you get all the fun you want. You can feel everything. Uh, and of course, many times they'll tell you, uh, you know, most of the time white bass will crush your lure. There's times in the winter uh, when they won't crush your lure. They're very, they can be very finicky biters. And this rod will pick up everything uh, once one uh, picks up the trout magnet or whatever happened to be using. Uh, you can feel it. Uh, once again, uh, now this rod is still being made. It's a lot of rod for the money. Uh, this is considered a high-end rod. And once again, I'll repeat, Major Craft, you get, uh, they're known for giving you a lot of rod for the money. Here's another rod I use uh, uh, quite a bit uh, for bluegill and cropping. It's the Major Craft Fine Tail Banshee Area Trout Rod, six foot seven, light action. It's rated from about 132nd up to six grams, which would be, I don't know, we'll call it, a third of an ounce. Uh, well, actually, it's it's uh, no, I take that back. It's probably a fifth, a sixth of an ounce. It's from uh, 0.8 to uh, six grams. Line is 1.5 up to five pounds. Uh, once again, all Fuji components, uh, titanium uh, guide frames, uh, torsite inserts. Uh, you saw the bending curve I did on this rod. Uh, it's a great rod for cropping, outstanding. It's very sensitive. It's a great bluegill rod. Uh, great rod to catch shellcracker on. Uh, I've caught uh, smallmouth with it. Uh, and I've caught uh, uh, drum. I've caught everything with it, to tell you the truth. But it's a, it's a, uh, a, a great rod for, and I've caught trout with it. Uh, it's a lot of fun catching trout with this. Uh, but I prefer the fast tip fish trout magnet for trout. Uh, but you can catch them with this, it's, it's fine. Uh, this, uh, this is the rod I, I was talking about earlier in one of my videos. It seems it should have had another guide. And I say that, I'm not a rod designer. Uh, the guides are spaced correctly according to the uh, rod specification chart uh, for a placement of guides. Uh, but it just seems like it could have another guide. I have, I broke this rod a couple of years back. It was my fault, it was in the rod locker in the boat. Uh, it didn't break on a fish. I don't think any of these rods, you're not gonna break on a fish if you don't uh, exceed the line rating. Uh, what I see a lot on YouTube and when I was doing a lot of research on these rods, these rods are all over Russia, these JDM rods, uh, all over Europe. But the Russians like to take these ultralight rods and they are subject to spool these things up a 10, 12 pound braid or whatever, uh, as best I can determine through, you know, the videos I'm watching. And they go chase these big, I mean, they're giant traps. I'm talking about eight, nine, 10 pounds. But they like to fish with these rods, but they, they will stress them out with the line capacity on them. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I've already had to pay for this whole upper section to replace it. Uh, I hope I don't break it again. Uh, but once again, Great bluegill, great crappie rod. Okay, here's my latest rod. Uh, it's a Angler's Republic Palm Zijura, six foot four extra ultralight. You saw the bending curve on it. Uh, I really like this rod. This is not a high-end rod. It is all Fuji components, stainless steel guide frames with sick inserts, except the tip top has a titanium uh, guide frame and a torsite insert to increase sensitivity. Uh, this is considered lower medium end, uh, but it's a great rod. It would be considered a very high end rod here in the States. Uh, this costs much less than a $200 G. Loomis trout rod, or you know, if you can still get a G. Loomis trout rod for 200 bucks. Uh, 
Sensitivity on area trap rods, they're not known to be sensitive rod. This one, for whatever reason, I do not know the graphite content of this rod. I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, I suspect the graphite content's up there because of the weight of this rod, which is 2.4 ounces. Um, it's, it's more sensitive than I thought it would be. Area trap rods uh, are made to cast spoons. Uh, so, you know, when a trout hits a spoon, He's going to crush it if you're not worried about uh, sensitivity. But I'm fishing a trout magnet for trout 90 something percent of the time, and I, I got to be able to feel it because a lot of times I'm fishing in water, uh, like I fish below Normandy Dam, tell us. That water is semi clear, but it's not it's not clear, say, like the Red or the White River. But this rod is an absolute ball to fish. Uh, I, you know, uh, what else can I say about it? I, I've uh, I bought it to catch, uh, when I couldn't catch my nine inch bluegill, uh, six inch, seven inch bluegill will give you a lot of fun on this rod. Uh, it's a absolutely uh, just a lot of fun. That's all I can say about it. Now I have uh, two more rods. I have several more rods. I'm not going to get it out and show them. One I have is a uh, Daiwa and Primi six foot four area light action trial rod. Uh, the tip is being replaced on it as we speak. Uh, it's considered a low end uh, rod. Uh, here in the States, it'd probably be considered a high end rod. I think I paid, uh, I got it from a guy in Michigan who had ordered it out of Japan and he, he didn't like it. Um, and I bought it from I think 120 bucks, which was a which was a pretty good deal. But I think new from uh, out of Japan, I'm I'm not sure exactly what they're. I think 130 bucks, something like that, 135 bucks, which is a lot of money. But uh, it's a great rod. It's a fantastic rod. Uh, I have a Major Craft Volky, which the tip top is being replaced on it also. Uh, it's my guest rod. Anybody ever comes fishing with me, uh, I'm gonna stick them with that rod. It's a great rod. It's a it's actually a Bass Super Finesse Series rod. Uh, it can handle 164th all the way up to a quarter of an ounce. And you, you're not gonna find a rod in the States that's rated for 164th to one quarter of an ounce. That, that don't happen. Uh, it's a solid tip rod. Uh, once again, very, uh, the tip diameter is, uh, I think, 0.9 millimeter. It's, it's very small. Now, I've had questions about uh, customs, uh, shipping charges, so on and so forth. I have never paid uh, customs on any rod I've ordered, but I only order two-piece rods. I don't order one-piece rods because you will get hit for customs and you will get hit for a handling fee with one-piece rods. One-piece rods come via FedEx or UPS and they're gonna put on their handling fee. And you won't get, you won't get that bill when they knock on your door. That bill will be sent to you in the mail. Uh, I'm assuming FedEx and UPS pays the, uh, uh, the postal service or customs people, whoever, but they, they collect the customs and they collect the handling fee. So one piece rods to me are, are prohibitive costly. You're talking for the shipping on a one piece rod, you're talking a hundred bucks, uh, maybe more now, I'm not sure. Uh, and then I don't know, you know, it depends on the value of the rod, what the customs fee is going to be in the handling fee. So, uh, but I, I'm, I'm not that hung up on one piece rods. Uh, they fixed that problem years ago. Uh, two piece rods fish just as well as one piece rods for ultralight anglers. For a bass guy that's throwing, you know, two ounce baits, that's, maybe that's something different, I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, uh, shipping. I order my rods from Platt or Digitaka. Platt uh, sometimes will have free shipping on rods, especially sometimes with major craft rods. Uh, Digitaka has free shipping on not all of their rods, but a lot of them. Uh, I've been ordering from both of these companies for almost five years now. They're reputable people. Uh, Platt.com and Digitaka.com. Uh, there is another company that I order from, uh, uh, I think it's JP Tackle. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up and put it, put it in, the, put the link in the, uh, um, 
in the video uh, where I get got my uh, got both my uh, Yamaha Blanks Blue Current TZ rods from. They're they're a good company to deal with too. Uh, the thing about ordering these rods off of eBay, uh, a lot of sellers on eBay are out of Japan, which that's fine. It's, they're great, but most of the time you're going to pay a premium when you order off of eBay. You're going to pay a pretty big premium. Uh, sometimes as much as 150 bucks, and and you're going to pay shipping, whatever the actual shipping cost. The actual shipping cost usually from Japan for a rod is 33 bucks, 34 bucks, depending on what the exchange rate is. The rod will come shipped to you though in a PVC container of either uh, thick PVC or extremely thick cardboard. Uh, I've never had a rod damaged. Uh, I pay for everything with PayPal. That way if there's something goes amiss, I can uh, get my money back. I've never had a problem uh, at all. I've never had anything broke. It's all arrived in good shape. Uh, somebody asked about the warranty on these rods. Yes, these rods have a warranty, but here's the thing. You've got to get this rod back to Japan, so that's not feasible. Uh, so if you have to have a warranty on the rod, then you don't need to be buying one of these. Uh, I found that uh, through my years of fishing, I've never broke a rod on a fish. Uh, I broke a lot of rods, but never on a fish. It's always been my stupidity. Uh, what else do we need to go over about uh, ordering from over there? Um, Christmas time. Uh, they will have a Christmas sale most of the time, not all the time. And they may not have the rod you want uh, or the reel you want on sale. The reels, they go on sale every once in a while. Rods go on sale uh, more often than reels do. Uh, they may not have the rod you want for sale at Christmas time. So, uh, but I can tell you this, if, if a rod list for say, you know, it sells for $300 uh, and you see that sale come up at Christmas and it's $200, there's 20% off or it's 30% off, whatever it is, and you want that rod, you better do it because I can guarantee you when Christmas is over with, that rod will go back up to the full price, whatever it was. And I found that out the hard way when I first started doing this. I had my eye on a rod made by Nissan called the Dreams Yuma Aging Rod. $235 Christmas sale, it said. Rod originally was $500. Uh, and man, I wanted that rod. And my wife kept telling me, you need to order that rod. I said, no, nah, I'll, I'll get it sometime. I guess not. Well, went to order it two weeks later, sale was gone. That was over three years ago. That rod has been selling for 500 bucks since then. It's never been back on sale. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they're out of stock of them right now. It's still in production, but but uh, Platt uh, shows out of stock. So people are buying it. They're buying it at that price. I should have bought and I didn't buy. So that's word to the wise. If you see something on sale there and you want it, it's a real sale. It's not it's not like here where you you know you, you see things here all the time. They're supposedly on sale, but it's really not a sale. It's you know it's kind of the price of them. You look around and get them everywhere for that. Uh, I'm trying to think, is anything else I need to talk about these rods? Uh, as I said, uh, I don't encourage people to to go and buy these rods. Uh, I have become a tackle junkie, uh, collecting rods. Uh, I've given my sons, uh, I don't know how many rods, quite a few. And when I'm gone from this world, they will get these rods. Uh, and uh, they'll go to good use if they don't break them all. And uh, I think I told you at the beginning of the video, uh, I've got uh, one more rod coming, uh, a super ultralight area trout rod, Major Craft Fine Tail Banshee. Uh, I just want to see what a super ultralight rod is like. Uh, I know the Fine Tail Banshee is a high graphite content. It's a high end rod. Uh, it, it not, even though this is an area rod, uh, this is not considered high end rod. I want to see what it's like. I'm sure it's going to be a lot more sensitive. I'm really looking forward to getting that rod. Uh, the problem for this rod and the super ultra light coming, I've got a Shimano Twin Pie reel on this rod that is just a tiny bit too big, I think, for this rod. So it looks like I'm going to need to order a Dial of 1003 series. For this rod and the super ultralight rod is coming. 
Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's probably going to run a little long. Um, if there's any questions you have for me, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, like I said, I don't guarantee you're going to catch any more fish with these rods. They are more sensitive than probably any rod you've had in your hand. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun fishing with them. Uh, you're going to feel every fin turn, every tail shake. You're going to feel everything with these rods. Um, and I, I can't stress enough. If you get one of these rods, do not, do not exceed that line rating. That's, that's the key to me is don't do it. Um, uh, it's, it's something that I pay real particular attention to and I'm, I'm not going to do it. So until then, um, uh, if I've left something out, I'll, I'll come back and add it in. Uh, when I review uh, the video and if you got any questions uh, I'll be happy to answer them um, and uh, if you like what you see hit the like button if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed I appreciate you subscribing uh, and remember uh, so live them all and as I always say life is good